Welcome to the Entrepreneur Revolution Press Conference. To everyone in the room and everyone else joining us on live stream at the World Economic Forum in Davos. The last time we were all in Davos, Uplink, an open innovation platform designed to unlock entrepreneur revolution for people, the planet, by supporting startups, innovative solutions for the world's most pressing problems was launched. 28 months later, we are gathered again to share the impact it has delivered, meet its champions, and launch a new partnership. Today, I'm joined by Puneet Ranjan, Global CEO of Deloitte, Mark Benioff, Chair and Co-CEO of Salesforce, Inna Moja, Land Ambassador of, at the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, William Quende, Founder of Sirius Seas, Gimwe Neo, Managing Director of the Center for Nature Climate at the World Economic Forum, and Roshni Nadar Maltra, who will be joining us later, Chairperson as HCL Technologies. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, for making time to speak with us. Uplink annual report was launched today. As one of Uplink's three founders in 2020, Puneet, could you please share with us your reflection on Uplink's journey and how the platform has been necessary for Deloitte's uh, impact objectives? First, uh, thank you for that, and it's great to be on the stage with my friend Mark, and uh, Roshni will be here. Uh, we're all purpose-driven organizations, so. Oh. Uh, oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining it. You've made it right on time. Perfect. So, um, Roshni, I was saying uh, we're all purpose-driven organizations. It's wonderful to be on the stage with you and with some of these ecopreneurs that we will talk about. and. Uh, and the WEF. You talked about impact. Let me give you some numbers in terms of what Uplink has been able to achieve. One billion dollars in funding uh, for the innovators. 16 million people provided access to essential health services. 10 million people increased their income through uh, Uplink. 2.8 metric tons of greenhouse gases. I think this is million metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions reduced. I think it's actually pretty remarkable uh, what Uplink has uh, achieved over the last uh, two years, something that Mark, Mark may have envisioned it, but uh, it has certainly uh, uh, exceeded my expectations. Um, I want to comment on Deloitte, but uh, also talk a little bit about, uh, about uh, Salesforce, uh, because we have similar uh, values. We're a purpose-driven organization. We're driven by making an impact for our clients that we serve, the people that we hire, and the communities that we live and work in. And that is to make an impact that matters. That is how uh, we are, um, that's our purpose. And that governs everything that we do. And so Uplink really fits into that because the problems that we face that the United Nations has so uh, eloquently uh, put out with the SDGs can only be solved if everybody comes together. Uh, business, the, uh, the public sector, civil society, but one reason why we started Uplink, Salesforce, Deloitte, and WEF, was to um, bridge the disconnect that exists between innovators, uh, ecopreneurs, and access to resources and capital, and Uplink was that bridge. But what we didn't imagine was the impact that Uplink would have for established entities like Deloitte. And I want to spend just a minute and talk about that because I think it has had a tremendous impact. It certainly identified innovators and ecopreneurs, and we've got a couple on the stage that will talk to you about it. But at Deloitte, we've made a commitment that we will impact 100 million people across the globe, 50 million of them women and girls in India through education by leveraging our most valuable asset, our people, the 400,000 individuals that called Deloitte home. And what we did with Uplink was we launched a challenge to help us bridge the gap between what we were trying to do in impacting the 100 million people, and we identified a number of uh, uh, ecopreneurs that we have now sponsored. They've been with us for a year, 
and the impact that they're having is unimaginable. So Uplink has not only helped uh, bring ecopreneurs to come and help address problems that we face, it has actually enabled a large established organization like Deloitte. Thank you, and those are powerful numbers. Mark, as one of the founding partner of Uplink and an innovator of Wenti.org, um, an initiative that collaborating closely with the platform, could you tell us why innovation is crucial at Salesforce climate objectives and also how eco preneurs have been making an, a difference on the ground? Well, thanks so much, and thank you, Panit. And you know, I think we're ready for a new environmental capitalism. Um, I think about that every day. As the CEO of Salesforce, we're now a company with 75,000 employees and the third largest software company in the world. It's very meaningful to me that we're also net zero, that we're fully renewable now, that it's not some future commitment that we're making, but that we realize the planet is a key stakeholder today. Um, it's one of the reasons why two years ago we came here to introduce 1T.org, the Trillion Tree Program, and why we're so excited to see such incredible commitments from corporations and governments all over the world, including what we just heard from the ministers from the United States and, and Chinese um, making further commitments to the Trillion Tree Program to sequester 200 gigatons of carbon, something we badly need to do for our planet. and why we're committed to an ecopreneur revolution, energizing these ecopreneurs, all these incredible young entrepreneurs, people like me, but it dedicated not to tech but to the environment. And these ecopreneurs, while well, they're guiding us to the future, this is an exciting moment for us. And we saw that really emerge. Puneet and I were just here two years ago introducing Uplink. Our companies built it, and we deployed it here at the WEF. We didn't expect to have 30,000 ecopreneurs collaborating, sharing, coming up with new ideas, new solutions every single day. So th this is an important time. This is a, a critical moment that we can all adopt a new environmental capitalism. We can all become net zero. Uh, we can certainly all plant a tree, but we can also all support these incredible ecopreneurs who are about to hear from. And you're going to see it all live and in action on Uplink. And thank you, Panit, for your leadership, because without it, we would not have been able to achieve this uh, incredible goal. Well, well done. Well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And speaking of this, let's meet those ecopreneurs. Um, William, you are a top innovator and a winner of the 2021 1T.org Sahel Challenge. First of all, what is an ecopreneur, especially what is an ecopreneur in West Africa? Well, uh, we, as Seriouche, empower 500 women group in sustainable production of mango and shea, which means that we provide them platforms which are zero carbon, zero deforestation, so they can process their product, which we bring to the world market. The focus on the value chain is actually critical. It is critical because it provides livelihood, economic opportunity, which are necessary to protect the Great Green Wall. Because if we do not provide this opportunity, uh, the Great Green Wall and all these other initiative might end up in charcoal. Uh, we are very grateful to have been selected uh, as uh, uh, an entrepreneur and, and a top innovator uh, by 1T.org and Uplink. Uh, it has, in fact, changed a lot. Uh, I say our development. Uh, this, it has evolved and we are now part of the 1T.org Sahel Coalition. And with the other member of the coalition, we are able to, de to, to deliver accelerated change and impact on the ground. Uh, this public-private partnership coalition actually uh, has eco-entrepreneur, uh, has government, uh, businesses, and also the civil society, and this allowed to, de to, to really provide uh, a, a great impact and an accelerated development for the Great Green Wall and the economy in the Sahel. Mm. Thank you. 
Ina, could you tell us a bit more about what it is to work with 1T.org and Uplink and what kind of support that they provide ecopreneurs? So, um, like you said before, I'm a UNCCD ambassador, so I started almost six years ago doing an advocacy for the Great Green Wall Project, and it was really under the radar when I started, and I see how impactful and how important it is, not just for the Sahel, but for the whole world, because when the Great Green Wall will be achieved in the end, it is something that is going to benefit all of us. And uh, for me, I created a nonprofit based on the Web3 and really harnessing the power of creativity and the creative economy there to uh, create a bridge between the, the Web3 communities and the real world communities of people who are living either on the front line of climate change or are going through uh, social and gender issues. And so that has been something quite exciting because Web3 and NFTs, a lot of people have heard about NFTs but don't quite know what it is. And what we are doing is really um, embracing this new technology that is very exciting and the communities that are build, building the, the, the Web3 space and bringing awareness to different projects. So uh, we, we did some auctions, we helped uh, a lot of projects in the Great Green Wall uh, by supporting them, not just with funding, but also partnerships and have people really know about them, engaging these Web3 communities into becoming more activist because there is a sense of giving back in the space and uh, it's something that I personally am building towards to really harness that and help have thousands of people become activists and doing the, the work that I am doing today because a lot of people don't know where to start and uh, art and communities are, for me communities are the heart of everything and uh, looking at the Great Green Wall how it evolved, they are the essence of the project, they are the heart of it, and that's why I push for community-driven solutions. And uh, if we can create a global movement uh, by using the Web3, this is something that I am very open to, uh, to see. Let's see how it goes in a few years. Thank you, Ina. Uh, expanding a little bit on what you've said, you know, you've talked about this community, and really that's what Uplink is creating. Um, Gimwe, can you, Share with us how important, um, first of all, how important innovation it is to, to accelerate meeting the SDGs, but also how important it is to have collaboration to move entrepreneurship forward. First, I want to congratulate the ecopreneurs as well as uh, to thank Deloitte and Salesforce uh, for their leadership on launching Uplink uh, innovation platform. It's only two years old, but we've actually seen the power of how it can actually mobilize uh, innovation efforts. Uh, the priority for us on the climate and nature agenda is around action. Action, action. The crisis is upon us. We need to act and we need to support innovators and entrepreneurs uh, and get their solutions to the market. The second area that I also want to use this opportunity to call uh, for is scale and speed and really the need for us to really call on all the funds, uh, capital, philanthropy, as well as uh, others uh, to invest and in supporting these entrepreneurs to bring their solutions and implement it at scale, right? Uh, we need to really uh, act very quickly and act at large scale in order to address the challenge that is already upon our doorstep. Uh, One trillion trees .org, uh, is a uh, about tree planting, it's about land restoration, uh, it's a public-private partnership, and uh, part of this is mobilizing corporates to make tree commitments, uh, tree, tree planting commitments, but also to energize innovators to look at how we can plant trees and use technology uh, to do this in a way that is robust and resilient and self-sustaining. Uh, so it, it is really a, a, the kinds of collaboration we hope to foster more uh, in, uh, within the forum. Uh, I mentioned this because uh, I'm also very delighted today to be sitting next to uh, Ms. Roshni Nada uh, Mahotra and, uh, and uh, we have a new collaboration to uh, continue to uh, launch new themes on the Uplink platform and today the one that we're going to launch is around water and I'm very delighted uh, that uh, Roshni uh, has uh, agreed and decided to champion uh, water entrepreneurs um, and I'll leave her to share more about uh, her vision 
uh, around the space. Okay. Yeah, uh, Gimwe uh, has teased us a little bit about this new announcement. Uh, so um, can you sh make the big announcement and let us know about this new partnership? Thank you so much um, uh, to everybody here. Um, you know, just to set a little bit of perspective, by 2030, the world population will be 8.5 um, billion, and the demand for fresh water, not just by us humans as a species um, for food production and health, but also natural habitats, biodiversity, will exceed more than 40%. Even today, only 1% of um, the world's fresh water is accessible, which is your rivers, lakes, ponds, and wetlands. The rest is in glaciers and underground, and this is depleting fast, as we know. Um, and most are categorized as poor to very poor in ecological health. Now, I come from a country which is 17% of the world's population and growing, but only home to 4% of the world's freshwater sources. And by 2030, um, you know, at least in India, the urbanization is expected to increase by 50%. So you can imagine the stress that's going to be on water recharge, on people, on biodiversity, on natural habitats, and even urban natural habitats. Um, you know, uh, while this, this problem is magnified when it's in India, it's equally magnified in many parts of the world. Um, so, you know, today I wanted to launch uh, an initiative with Uplink, and it's called the Aquapreneurs Innovation Initiative. Not very original from Ecopreneurs. Um, but um, the focus is going to be fresh water. And, um, you know, how can we source innovation, entrepreneurs in freshwater solutions across the world, um, increasing people, increasing talent uh, capacity in the field, Providing a landscape for collaboration, there might be solutions that already exist, but how can we provide various aqua labs all over the world where they can actually experiment their innovation and ideas and uh, really look for um, nature-based solutions, tech-based solutions, who are the young people who are working in this space. Um, so thank you so much. And um, you know, I represent an organization, an IT services organization with more than 200,000 people. Uh, you know, since HCL was founded, we used to call them ideapreneurs. So it's really good that we've leaped from techpreneurs, ideapreneurs, to ecopreneurs and aquapreneurs. Mm -hmm. So, so thank you. Thank you. So, my panelists were incredibly succinct, and we've managed to squeeze out a few minutes for uh, questions. So, if there's any questions in the room. Um, I'll open up the floor. Um, I know there's a few journalists here. Yeah. If you can state your name and organization, please. Hi. Uh, my name is Jessica from Eco Business. I'm based in Singapore. So my question really is that we've seen the markets been very volatile, and in times like that, investors seek safety. And I run a fund myself, so I know that a lot of the capital is actually flying to fixed income or really safe investments. Whereas investing in innovation and venture is considered as a little higher risk. So I'd love to hear some views on whether you think um, that this would jeopardize perhaps the innovation around SDGs that we're hoping to see, or do you see you know new areas or new of capital coming to fund these ecopreneurs, aquapreneurs. Thank you. If anyone, that seems very open and everyone's qualified to answer that question. I'm happy to answer it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that you, you're witnessing an ecopreneur revolution and uh, these incredible numbers of new uh, entrepreneurs who are starting new companies in Silicon Valley, where I'm from. It's estimated that 25% of all new companies are focused on environmental solutions. And uh, while valuations might be resetting um, in this kind of environment, maybe they even got a little peaky, I would say, uh, you can see now that uh, this is still going to be an opportunity because there's so much capital that can be deployed um, by investors on this incredible new sector. And you're seeing solutions that are going to deliver tremendous uh, returns and already have uh, to the investment community. So I think it's actually going to be a very positive environment. And great companies are born in recessions. Salesforce was born in 2001 in a recession. Uh, and I expect a lot of these ecopreneurs will be born in this recession as well. 
I would echo what Mark uh, just said, but I would just add two quick points. One, um, you know, we talk a lot about technological innovation, and that will play a critical role. Uh, but nature-based solutions, and Roshni, I was very glad to hear that part of what you're launching today has a nature-based component to it. Nature-based solutions, I think, which are um, community-oriented uh, and are less uh, costly uh, are equally important. Um, and I think that is going to play a critical role. I think one other point that we forget is that investors and other stakeholders certainly are key here. But let's take Deloitte. The reason why we do this, why I do this, is I have 400,000 professionals. 86% of them are millennials and Gen Zs. And I, I poll them every quarter. Invariably, they ask me, what does Deloitte do beyond its core profit motive? We will hire 70,000 professionals this year. We will compete with Roshni at some of the best universities. And they will ask us, what does Deloitte do beyond its core profit motive? So if you don't have a credible response within the organization and within our communities, we're not going to hire the very best individuals, and we are definitely not going to retain them. Mm. So come recession, I think this revolution is here to stay. If I can just add, um, return on nature also takes time. Um, so I think that uh, as soon as you start measuring the way you've measured return on investments in other startups, you um, devalue the impact that you create. So, um, you know, building frameworks that measure return on investments in nature or in these ecopreneurs or aquapreneurs, their solutions might take a little longer. Uh, how you define risk will also be different. But um, I think, uh, you know, uh, there is an opportunity, at least for large organizations like us, to deploy patient capital and allow the solutions to actually evolve. And um, uh, as uh, Puneet said, nature-based solutions exist, and they might take a little longer to show impact, but they will. As an ecopreneur from the Sahel, uh, we also took action and opportunities uh, within this crisis. Uh, two weeks ago at the COP15 in Abidjan, uh, we had a meeting where we were looking at using our platforms to mobilize more foodstuff for the global economy. We think that we can significantly contribute to the resilience of the global food market by using our technologies to bring online a significant amount of food products. Hi, my name is uh, Martina. I work for the Chinese news agency uh, Xinhua and the Chinese television uh, CGTN. Congratulations, first of all, great uh, initiative, uh, but it does sound uh, very nice. Um, so how do you actually make it work in the context of COVID-19 and the decoupling and more geopolitical tensions? I would like to ask Punit and uh, Mark as well, because we still have a monopoly of capital being deployed mainly to the likes of Silicon Valley and so on. So in terms of geographic diversification, how will you make sure that more you know, developing markets from tier markets and so on can benefit. Thank you. Well, my friend Mark here says uh, nobody's against a tree. So whether you're in China, geopolitics plays nothing uh, in terms of some of these solutions that are being proposed by these ecopreneurs. Um, and I, and I, you know, Mark gave an example of uh, Silicon Valley. I think there are ecopreneurs and entrepreneurs in China and in mainland China, for instance. We are we've committed to helping 10 million left behind children as China has rapidly urbanized and developed. Uh, many of these children have been left with grandparents and others, and there's an educational component there. So there are opportunities in China, and we are uh, deploying um, uh, across the globe. You want to add to that? Well, I think uh, we just uh, came from a uh, panel uh, in the plenary where we heard from uh, Minister Shea Zanwa. And uh, he said that in order to combat climate change and to green the planet, that uh, China will actively respond to the World Economic Forum's 1T.org initiative, uh, which uh, Salesforce uh, started now two and a half uh, years ago. 
uh, by planting and conserving uh, 70 billion trees by 2030. So this is uh, very exciting. China has about 25 percent of the world's trees. Uh, as you know, we had six trillion trees. We now only have three trillion trees left on our planet. We need to put a trillion trees back. And so if we're going to add a trillion trees, then I hope that uh, China will put in 250 billion trees. And uh, this is an incredible uh, uh, opportunity because I think, as Puneet said, nobody is anti-tree. And uh, we can have a tree, uh, tree um, diplomacy. And if we can agree on the tree, Maybe we can also find other things that we can agree to as well. And on if that, I may, sorry, if I just supplement that, uh, because the trillion trees is already uh, in Sahil with the Great Green Wall in India, in America, and with China coming on, I think we have a very good uh, momentum to continue to scale the efforts forward. So on that wonderful vision of all of us agreeing on a tree, mm -hmm. um, I would like to thank my panelists today for making the time to share with us um, new partnership, tell stories of the impact of Uplink and the expansions and extension that is coming into the future. Thank you all for joining us today in the room and on the live stream. Thank you.